common proverb. Trust takes years to build, seconds to break, and forever to repair. While the complexities of trust have been the subject of great discourse, an appreciation of its delicate nature and profound effect, in my view, is a necessary expression of wisdom as well as foresight. We may choose to trust under the confidence that our best interests will be advocated and our exposures protected. Yet, within the brisk instance of a breach, the entire stability of this state of trust can be undone, prompting a continued attitude of skepticism, suspicion, as well as doubt. Despite this fragility, trust grows in importance as a consequence of its ability to inspire confidence. Confidence, in turn, galvanizes the selection of choices, and choices made manifest in discrete and tangible actions. These actions, in turn, influence the way in which individuals interact within their relative social and economic environments, not only affecting the willingness for cooperation and collaboration, but ultimately also impacting the daily realities of our choices as consumers and behaviors. It is in reflection of such that collective levels of trust amongst various societal actors have been widely regarded <coughs> by economists, political scientists, and researchers to be able to possess widespread capabilities in broad trends. And these, of course, include associations to market forces, economic performance, as well as society's well-being. Today, the far-reaching influence of trusts has stemmed into urgent discussions of global affairs. A few months ago, I had the privilege of co-chairing the high-level Salzburg Global Forum in, in Salzburg, which, a group, which had a group of very high-level finance uh, chairmen of some banks, and leading policymakers. In my speech at the forum, I highlighted several pertinent global trends that threaten the harmony of our socioeconomic order. These include the widening divides of income inequality, increasing risks of climate change, surging debt levels amongst major economies, and anxieties about job security. These are but a few of the challenges of our global landscape that has cultivated a strong response against status quo, creating feelings of unease, and in some cases, leading for aggressive motions of change. In developed economies, nationalist movements expressing anti-globalization sentiments have demanded policy readjustments towards protectionism, steps perceived as cures in their mind for various social inequalities. Consequently, we have seen unexpected membership withdrawals of long-standing collaborative unions such as Brexit, reprioritization of trade agreements such as the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and other developments. It is important to note that these occurrences are ultimately symptomatic of a global environment lacking trust. As stakeholders convened with intent to embark upon the journey of restoring trust, we must remain mindful that we dwell in a unique era, an era that brings about distinct opportunities and uncertainties. Unprecedented technological evolution, rapid information dissemination, intensifying competition, and growing consumer demands have all catalyzed a substantial degree to which the world is inextricably linked, connecting nations, markets, businesses, and people in a vast, complex tapestry. Ladies and gentlemen, this depth of interconnectivity is particularly evident in the financial markets, where risk transmission and tolerance is realized across a broad spectrum of market segments. The recognition of these transmissions of risk is a simple yet profound understanding 
but the actions of a few key players can impact the welfare and conditions of many. Several experiences within markets have showcased and reminded us of this, demonstrating instances of market failures that have diminished trust and propagated market manipulative behaviors beyond the confines of national borders and economic boundaries. The LIBOR, London Interbank offer scandal in, in, the, in, in UK represents one such example where dealers were discovered colluding to manipulate interbank reference rates. This led to a loss of trust in a key benchmark, resulting in massive fines for financial institutions and moving towards a more robust transaction-based reference rate. Similarly, all of us are aware of the significant impact that the global financial crisis had, an event which observed the collapse of large financial institutions and resulted in severe disruption in developed markets, an impact which echoed throughout all four corners of the globe. As a consequence, systemic risk recognition surfaced, expressing concern that financial institutions and corporations had become too large and too interconnected whose down, downfall would cascade in widespread adversity. Businesses crashed, communities lost the capacity to form stable livelihood, and families witnessed the dissipation of their wealth. Ordinary citizens sustained the brunt of the ensuing recession, only deepened by the prevalence of diminishing liquidity and a credit crunch. And as a result, many, many stakeholders developed disenchantment towards financial markets, provoking a call for change. Ladies and gentlemen, amongst the various lessons that the global financial crisis conveyed, it has also raised insights into the paradigms of trust and its delicate stability that characterizes relations between markets and regulators. We just have to look at some of the statistics. The world's largest bank, as at the end of first quarter this year have paid US 321 billion in fines for regulatory breaches. That number, to put into context, is slightly more than the GDP of Malaysia, <laughs> and same as that of Hong Kong. Take Wells Fargo, for example. Look at, firstly, Wells Fargo estimated that 2.1 million accounts had been opened by its staff without customer consent. Then it was revealed that 570,000 of its auto loan customers were charged for insurance that they did not need. Some auto loan customers actually defaulted because of the insurance burden and had their vehicles reprocessed. A few days after the news broke, the bank conceded that another 1.4 million unauthorized accounts had been discovered. The examples continue. Ultimately, with such large-scale and far-reaching transgressions, it is therefore no surprise that infractions such as this have instigated periods of hesitation and uncertainty towards financial markets. As my colleague on the Financial Stability Board, Governor Mark Carney, puts it, I quote, trust arrives by foot and leaves by Ferrari. Or is it Aston Martin? <laughs> I would go further to say that trust happily leaves in another man's Ferrari because people do not need to have a bad experience themselves to lose trust. All they need is to hear of another person's bad experience and trust will arise. Ladies and gentlemen, this simple but powerful illustration underscores the very nature of consumer and investor confidence that ultimately forms the bedrock of financial markets. It hi highlights the importance of how, of how aligned interests to trust and misaligned interests lead to suspicion. In the capital market, the opportunity for investors such as yourselves to realize returns remains a key element of market performance. Investors who perceive themselves to be disadvantaged may very well reduce their exposure. 
or in light of increased risk, demand higher returns. Reduced investor participation markets will affect or lead to lower liquidity and therefore the higher costs of raising capital. Where trust exists in the market, capital is allocated efficiently from those who have access funds to those who need it in a manner that lowers the cost of raising capital and creates liquidity. Where trust exists, time and resources are not unnecessarily wasted in verifying information and counterparties. And ultimately, this will lead to an efficient and proper allocation of capital, thereby supporting the capital market's extremely important role in sustaining the development within the economy. In the context of Malaysia, our capital market today is 3.1 trillion ringgit, something in the order of about 2.6 times GDP. We have witnessed extremely healthy levels of fundraising uh, over the past five years with an average of 160 billion raised annually. This has enabled the capital market to play an active role in supporting business activity and the real economy, including the infrastructure development of the country. Similarly, savings mobilization has grown significantly with Malaysia's strong fund management industry having established itself over the years. Assets under management are now 750 billion in the first half of 2017. It is one of the fastest growing segments of our capital market, growing at a rate of 15.8% per annum over the last 10 years, from a figure of about 161 billion 10 years ago. Similarly, the unit trust industry has also experienced a significant increase in value from 122 billion in 2006 to 409 billion as the end of June 2017. These private fund managers, together with public institutional investors, make up in excess of 1.3 trillion worth of assets. Ladies and gentlemen, I cite these figures for you, to you this evening because the scale of fund mobilization by Malaysian businesses and the savings by Malaysian investors shows that there is trust and confidence in the capital market. We never, ever take this for granted. This fragility is something that you have to guard extremely carefully. The Securities Commission recognizes that building trust and confidence must and will always remain as a core constant of our efforts. This demands robust market infrastructure and a regulatory architecture that enables transactions to occur fairly, orderly, and in a transparent manner where investors are protected. Ladies and gentlemen, in the present regulatory environment, a continued motion for robust capital market infrastructure and sustained trust calls for the recognition of several imperatives. While these encompass a broad range of considerations, I will try to summarize them into three T's. The first T, very apt, given the vision of the incoming president, is around technology. Technology, ladies and gentlemen, has emerged with great pertinence across capital markets, introducing new challenges in the way trust <coughs> is to be sustained. One such challenge is accountability. For example, who is going to be held responsible for an algorithm or artificial intelligence? In 2012, a glitch in the trading algorithm of Knight Capital in New York disrupted the trading prices of 140 stocks listed on the New York Stock Exchange with significant loss, billions of US dollars lost in value. With the advent of robo-advisors today, investors are getting advice from a computer program who cannot feel the consequences of its wrong actions. As artificial intelligence progresses, we will find self-learning machines augmenting, the, augmenting their actions as they go along. In order to ensure that trust is maintained, providers of digital services must be held accountable for the actions of their creations and platforms. Privacy of user information is the other area of big concern. 
While various laws are in place to require data protection and privacy, incidences of massive hacks of information that have compromised customer and other data is unfortunately becoming commonplace. In the capital markets, investors need to have the confidence that their data is secure. Not only is data security a significant concern, cyber fraud and cyber security risk have become a priority for all participants in the digital capital market. The increasing reliance of the capital market on technology also means that better cybersecurity, therefore, needs to be a prerequisite of trust. Another technological evolution that undoubtedly warrants mention relates to the increasing accessibility and influence of social media. This has transformed the rate and breadth at which information disseminates, granting the public an ability to rapidly expose the conduct of businesses. And additionally, as more information circulates within society, society in turn demands to know more before they are willing to trust. In today's world, where products and services can be replicated and pricing matched, trust, ladies and gentlemen, emerges as a significant competitive advantage for businesses. Therefore, creating value with the purpose of earning customer trust is fast becoming an important consideration for businesses to remain relevant and competitive. The second imperative is teaming, which cannot be underscored with sufficient importance. Here in Malaysia, the SC is continuing to pursue proportionate regulation by emphasizing the shared responsibility and collaboration among our stakeholders to build and sustain trust. An example of this has been, in terms of shared responsibility, has been our approach in relation to the recently launched um, code on Malaysian Code on Corporate Governance, where we emphasize what we call the CARE concept, which is comprehend, apply, and report. Here, we've empowered the boards of companies while holding them accountable. Under this code, the audit committee is tasked with ensuring that the financial reporting process is appropriately carried out, including the appointment of the auditor and the audit process itself. The audit committee is also expected to provide auditors with views and information about transactions and issues that have impact on the financials or audit of the company. At the same time, we are also very prepared to step in where regulatory discipline is necessary. When we saw that there was a need to show up confidence in financial reporting after a spate of incidences globally and some uh, unfortunate cases locally, we established the Audit Oversight Board to provide the